Let me go ahead and stop you at the beginning of the video. Cut the momentum. Er, record scratch. If you haven't seen BT Neanderthal's video where they cover how elite monsters are going to spawn in a map, that means champions, super uniques, uniques, and bosses. If you haven't seen their video, here's a link to it right here. Go watch it because a lot of what I'm about to explain to you is based off of the information that he communicated very recently. It's a fantastic video. Please go check it out. Here's the reason why the video is titled the way that it is. You've been farming wrong the entire time. You never knew it. You've been screwing yourself out of a bunch of extra elite packs. And this is going to be so much more important when Terra Zones go live in Season 2, Patch 2.5 of Diablo 2 Resurrected. Now before I break down what's happening, just for people who haven't seen BT's video or want another recap, let me show you what I'm talking about so that if you just want to go ahead and skip ahead, you can. If you don't, you can watch it right now. We're going to go farm Tristram on Hell difficulty, and we're going to count the number of elite packs that we run into. So when we walk into Tristram, rather than cut straight across that nice big pack of monsters that are going to be right here in Griswold, let's go up first. We have one elite pack right here. We have a second elite pack right there. So no champions yet, but we've hit two. Come back around this way. Here we have another elite pack, so that's three. And then we have Griswold, so that's four. He counts as an elite pack himself because he's a boss. Now here I'm going to cut across the middle. And then five. This one is a four champion elite pack. So instead of a five count, that's actually going to be an eight count. And then let's just check everywhere else. Eight elite packs. Now let's try that one more time, but I'm just going to go straight into the middle and then kind of look around. Oh, and if you made it this far, consider just going ahead and hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. We are like so close to 8K and if we can make it to 10K, I'm pretty sure they invite me into the Illuminati. And I'm super soaked to finally figure out why they keep putting eyes in those weird pyramids, right? So here we're just gonna cut straight into the middle. So we have our champion pack here. That's two monsters. So one for two. Then I'm gonna go straight down to Griswold. We have an elite pack, so that's two elite packs with three monsters, four if you count Griswold. Now let's take a look around. We have another elite pack here, that's five. Okay, and well, there you go. No other elite packs in here, so that was only five. Interesting. We are playing on single player, so our maps are gonna stay the same until we change from hell difficulty to normal difficulty, we're using the same seed and we're approaching the portal from the same way. So how come on that time we got less monsters to spawn as opposed to the first time where we got more monsters to spawn? So again, just to recap how elite monsters spawn. So again, champions, uniques, super uniques, and bosses. When you load into an area, that area is going to have two values, a minimum and a maximum of how many elite groups it wants to spawn in that area. For Hell Tristram, the number of elite packs that it wants to spawn is between five and six. And here's how the game calculates that. When you walk into a new area, it's going to spawn monsters within a two screen radius of you. It's going to take a roll of the dice. And if it succeeds, it's going to generate those monsters as a unique or a champion instead of a normal monster pack. Uniques and champions are great because they're worth more experience. They're always going to drop a magic quality or a higher item unless they drop a massive amount of gold or a rune. And all of the minions that they spawn with are also worth more experience. So elite packs are the best way for getting experience and leveling quickly, but also for generating a ton of magic items in better in quality. Every time that you move further into an area, it generates more monsters and it takes a roll. But remember, it only wants to create between five to six elite monsters in Tristram. Now here's one of the weird caveats. Whenever it generates a champion group, each one of the champions in that group is going to count as their own elite monster, even though they all spawn in the same pack. So if you so if you go right into the middle of Tristram, you see four shaman there, that eats up four of the six elite monsters that wants to generate in the area. Oh, and Griswold is always going to be on the map, and those champions in the middle of town are also going to be in there. This is something called a tile spawn monster. There are particular tiles in the game that always have to spawn 
either certain types of monsters or a particular monster. So think about the Hellforge area in Act 4 always spawns the Festo. You can think of the Smithy area in the barracks will always spawn the Smith in it. The same is true for Griswold at the bottom edge of the Tristram burnt town tile and that champion pack in the middle. Now, like I said, Griswold and those champions all count as individual values added up to the total elites that we want to spawn. But if we know that they will always spawn when we go near them, we can actually get more monsters to spawn in an area than typically would. Now let me go back into Tristram and I can explain what I'm talking about a little bit better now that you get the idea. Right here, if you think about the size of my screen, we have spawned monsters roughly one teleport away that way, one teleport away this way, and one teleport away down here. And if I stay on the outside of this wall, I'm never within two screens of the definite spawn of champions here and the definite spawn of Griswold down here. So by going this way, I'm giving these monsters that spawn in these areas the best chances that they can possibly have of generating as an elite, as opposed to generating as a base monster. Because every time the game generates an elite monster, it is less likely then to generate additional elite monsters. Technically, it doesn't like to generate elite monsters near one another if it can avoid it. So you see we had one pack there that we always get along with Griswold. And now I'm cutting across the middle and I have my champ pack here. You'll also see that I had a second champion pack up here. This was three and this one was also three. So along with the elite pack that we spawned down below and Griswold, that was eight total elite monsters. Now let's run through that again and try to think about the math as I explain it as we go. By going straight into the middle, I activate this champion pack and four of our elite monsters now spawned in this champion pack. Going straight down here where I spawned the elite pack that's always near Griswold, now we're up to six. And I'm not gonna put money on it because I'd rather the game show you it itself. But let's go ahead and look around and see if we get any other elite packs to spawn in this area. All right, so there we go, we got one. Although, right here, that area, especially when I got up to here, is actually within one screen or two screens of where we were. So this probably spawned before we spawned the shamans. So there you go. We got a total of seven elite monsters, but we only got five elite packs. When you remember that three of those elites were actually champions in a single pack. Now, this idea can be applied to a lot of different places that you're typically going to be farming in D2 in general, but also now that terror zones are being introduced. Another one that I'll show you very quickly just to highlight this as well for a reason why probably this area isn't going to be that great is something like Frigid Highlands. When you first walk into Frigid Highlands, you're going to be met by Eldritch right here. So you're already hitting an elite pack. Just looking around very quickly, none of these other monsters are actually spawning as an elite monster. Now here's the problem with the Frigid Highlands. When you get to the first Barbarian Hold, you also have Sharptooth Slayer, a second super unique. Within the first couple screens of the Frigid Highlands, you've already hit two super uniques, which are taking up two of your potential elite spawns in this area. And the same thing happens with Shank in the Bloody Foothills. Shank is the first monster that you find in this area. He is a super unique, so that counts as one of our elite packs. Remember when I said an elite monster spawning in an area typically tends to cause other elite monsters not to spawn near them? That's generally true, and it is true for Shank as well. Coming up over here, you might find an additional pack or two, but very often, oh, here you go, this one, which was actually outside of a two screen distance going straight down to Shank, managed to spawn as an elite, but this area is gigantic and you have to get further and further away for a chance to find your other elite pack. So there we just found two or three, another champion pack. Walking into any area that's going to have a force tile spawn monster, a monster that will always spawn there and eat up one of your elite packs, is one of the easiest ways to vastly limit how many monsters are gonna spawn in these terror zones and decrease your overall efficiency if you're trying to kill as many elite packs as possible. And just to run you through some numbers, we ran multiple iterations of Tristram across different seeds and what we got for numbers were on average just cutting straight up into the middle and then circling around down to Griswold and then going and looking for other packs we were often only running into six to eight total elite monsters with only four to five packs of them and the majority of them being champions whereas when we took the route where we cut along the top wall and then came back around to Griswold's area 
then jumped up into the middle, we're averaging 10 to 11 total monsters, with 6 to 7 of them being elite packs, and then the remainder being made up by champions. So there are a lot of different places, especially in these new terror zones, where there are auto-spawning, super unique monsters. Think Beetle Burst in the Far Oasis, Cold Crow in the Cave, Arc Elder in Lost City, the list goes on and on, where you can make sure to route through an area more effectively, minimizing the space within which you're spawning monsters and maximizing how many elite packs you're running into, and then making sure to go to those forced tile spawns at the end of your farming session, because they will always be there and they can very often often exceed the total limit of elite monsters spawning in an area. So again, if you haven't seen it, go check out BT's video. I think he does an amazing job of communicating this. And while it's something that I knew about, I never really seen it articulated very well. And it was nice to actually have the numbers in addition to the understanding. So please go check out the video. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.